Moving on to the next example, we have to determine the domain and range of each of these functions. Now, I'm going to move rather quickly through these examples. We'll have a better process of finding the domain and range of each of these when we get into the transformations of functions in the next few videos. But let's try to figure these out so far with the basic tools that we have. So starting off with this first function, notice how it's a line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 4. So to solve for the x-intercept, we could plug in 0 for y. And if we isolate for the x, we would get a value of 1 half. So the x-intercept is 1 half, so the line looks something like this. So notice how the x value can take any value. So the domain is x is an element of real numbers. And the range, the y values, can also be any value. So the range is y is an element of real numbers. This function here, actually, there should be a f of x here. So f of x is equal to this. This function here is a parabola. And it has a vertex. It's already in vertex form. And the vertex is at negative 2 and negative 5 and it opens downwards because the a value is negative. So it looks something like this. So the vertex would be at negative 2 and negative 5, somewhere over here, and it would open downwards. So for a parabola, we know that the domain can be any x value. So x is an element of real numbers. The range y can be any number, however, it has to be less than negative 5, which is the y value of the vertex. So the y can be anything, but y has to be less than or equal to negative 5. Moving on to this function. Now, we know that we can't square root a negative number. So we know that 10 minus 3x, which is what's inside the square root, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means 10 has to be greater than or equal to 3x. And then isolating for x, dividing both sides by 3, we know that x has to be less than or equal to 10 over 3. So if we were to take this function and graph it, it would look something like this, where this x value here at the vertex is 10 over 3. So looking at this graph, we can tell that the domain the x value can be anything, but it has to be less than or equal to 10 over 3. Again, if it's greater than 10 over 3, we would get a negative in the root, and that would be undefined. And then the range, the y can be any value, but it has to be greater than or equal to 0. Notice how all the y values are positive. Now, as we mentioned before, the y, when you square root something, it could be plus or minus. But since we're dealing with a function, we would only deal with the positive um, y values when we square root something. Moving on to this function, we got negative 2x squared plus 12x. Notice how this is a parabola. And we can graph it in multiple ways. We can factor it, find the x-intercepts, then find the vertex. I say we put this in vertex form so we would complete the square. You may have to go back to grade 10 and review how to complete the square, but uh, I'm going to do it right now. So you would take out a negative 2 from both of these terms. So we'd have x squared minus 6x. And then what we would do is we would take half of 6, which is 3, square it, which is 9. So we would put plus 9 minus 9 here. And then negative 2, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Then we take out the negative 9, multiply it by negative 2, and that would give us positive 18. And then notice how this bracket here is a perfect square trinomial. So when we factor it, we would get x minus 3 squared plus 18. And notice how now it's in vertex form. We took this parabola in standard form and transformed it into vertex form. And it's easy to tell 
that the vertex is 3 and 18, so that would be somewhere up here. Sorry, this should be 3 and 18. And since the A value is negative, we know that this vertex will open down. Okay, just a rough sketch. This is not necessarily correct, but all we really need when we're dealing with parabolas and domain and range is the vertex. So for a parabola, we know that the domain, the X value can be anything, right? It goes on forever. And then the range, the Y value can be anything as long as Y is less than or equal to this maximum value here of 18 on the vertex. And now moving on to our last function, we got f of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 4. And this function is a little unique because usually what we're used to dealing with is there being a linear function under the square root, but now we have a quadratic function under the square root. However, the same intuition applies. So x squared minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because if it's less than 0 then the function will be undefined. We can't square root a negative number. So when is x squared minus 4 greater than or equal to 0? Well basically when x squared is greater than or equal to 4 and if you look at a graph of x squared if we were to graph it When is it greater than or equal to the y value of 4? Well, basically, when x is either greater than 2 or when x is less than negative 2. Does that make sense? Because at a x value of 2, we have a y value of 4. Remember, this is the graph of x squared. And at a x value of negative 2, we have a y value of 4. So this relation holds, or this inequality holds, x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, which is the same thing as x squared is greater than or equal to 4. That holds when x is greater than or equal to 2, right? The graph will be, the y values will be higher than 4 uh, for x values that are greater than or equal to 2. And when x is less than or equal to negative 2 here on the left side. So if we were to take this function and graph it, it would look something like this. You can even try it yourself. You can make a table of values. You would start with x values 2 and then pick a few that are greater than 2 and then start with the x values negative 2 and pick a few that are less than negative 2. And you can also try plugging in x values in between negative 2 and 2. However, you'll notice that you won't be able to square root those numbers. So the function will be undefined. So this is how the graph looks like of this function. So what, the, what would the domain be? What values can x take? Well, x can be any number as long as x is less than or equal to negative 2 or x is greater than or equal to 2. And the range the y values can be anything as long as y is greater than or equal to 0.